Hello and welcome to this WordPress tutorial. Today's topic is dealing with the query loop block. So the query loop block is uh, one of many blocks available uh, as uh, you might find here in the blocks uh, kind of locker box. Uh, and what it is, as at least defined by WordPress, is an advanced, as you can see here where I'm hovering over, a description says, an advanced block that allows displaying post types based on different query parameters and visual configurations. And you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean? So um, let's step back a little bit and just talk about uh, WordPress sites in general. By default, WordPress, of course, has a post section, which is the section where you would uh, populate blog posts. Um, so this comes with all WordPress sites. So if you have uh, blog posts on your site, you could take advantage of this query loop by automatically populating your blog feed on a page or a post. So it's kind of, so you can kind of have a set it and forget it sort of thing. Uh, it'll just automatically update whenever you create a new blog post on wherever you have populated this uh, particular block. So you could have this query loop block on 50 pages and they will all update once you post however many new blog posts. So it's pretty awesome in that way. Now it's also uh, now available to use as of recent, as of, as of WordPress 6.1, I believe, uh, the ability to um, select what are called custom post types. And what are those? Well, post is a post type, pages is a post type. Just think of a uh, another section dedicated to another content type. Now this could be uh, all kinds of uh, different content types that your developer may have programmed down to your website. So this is gonna vary depending on the site, but you may have something, for example, like press releases or testimonials. Maybe you have uh, a site about books. Maybe you have a site about movies. There could be a custom post type devoted to it. So that's what it, that essentially means. And so if your developer has created something like that in the back end, you could uh, probably automatically curate or populate that content as well. So when you say populate a new movie in your movie's custom post type, that'll just automatically show up. Uh, so that's an example of what a custom post type is. But for the vast majority of people, I would imagine most people probably don't have custom post types, but maybe, but I could be completely wrong about that. But of course, everybody has posts, but not everybody's going to uh, populate blog posts, but if you do, this is this is the definite uh, default way of using it. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this block into my block editor. I'm going to close this guy out. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a pattern. You can either choose a pattern or start blank. I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Uh, there's different viewpoints here uh, that you could see that you can kind of toggle there a little bit to kind of see how that looks in this particular viewpoint of carousel. But I'm going to do the grid look so I can kind of choose my pattern. Uh, I will say this is going to vary per website. So this may look completely different depending on how your developer has done stuff where you're working with a different theme or, or so on. This just happens to be the way it looks on my site, uh, this uh, kind of default site. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, this one, which is going to basically have a basic blog feed with six posts and it's going to be in three columns, as you can see here in I'm going to choose that one by clicking on it, and as you can see, it populated it through it. Um, now, the next thing I want to point out is you can actually mess with the individual elements within each of these, which is pretty awesome. Um, so that this follows a certain flow that you want. So maybe you don't want the title up top. Uh, maybe you want it below the excerpt for whatever reason. Um, maybe you want the date higher up you know, so on and so forth. Well, here's kind of the way to do that. Uh, if you've seen my other video on list view, um, this is basically, uh, um, go, you know, the, you'll, you'll know what I'm about to do, but if you haven't, the list view, uh, as you'll see what I click here, is basically an outline of how your site is constructed. You know, so we've got a little empty paragraph block, which I'm gonna go ahead and zap out because we don't need it. Uh, and we've got our query loop block. Notice there's an arrow to your left. If you click to collapse that, you get a post template um, uh, block here. 
sub block, I guess. Click on that and you get a group block, which is, you can see as I kind of hover over, I'm highlighting the various uh, pieces of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna collapse that. And then you can see as I hover over, I've got, I've got my blocks that are related to the template, with the, which is inside, happens to be inside of a group. Um, so moving these is as simple as either dragging and dropping them up and down, as you saw there, or clicking the arrow to move them up and down. So it's very easy, or you can mess with them here in the list view, which I am a big fan of. Uh, you can, of course, if you say you don't have a, a use for the date, the post date, I am going to just simply click this ellipsis and delete. And you can see the date has been removed from all posts. So basically you're updating the template throughout your query loop, okay? So that's, that's what essentially happens. Uh, anything you move will cascade throughout. So that's, that's what happens there. Now, you also have an option to, when you have a post excerpt, which uh, could be by default uh, what you, you input or not, but if you do have the post excerpt, you can then define, well, what does the read more link say? So you will see more info, shows throughout automatically, will be the link that I decide to use. And that's as simple as just that, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if you don't enter any text, it simply won't show the link. So if I didn't type anything in, or if I just delete it like that, the no link will show up, but we'll go ahead and keep it for, for now. The next thing you may be wondering is like, okay, this is great, but I want some visuals in the mix. Okay, well, the cool thing about this is just like any other uh, block, you can add blocks to it. So you can add blocks uh, within this. And now this is a recent thing that you weren't able to necessarily do uh, before, although you were able to add uh, blog post uh, related blocks in, you weren't able to necessarily add just anything. But it's cool because uh, you, you, you can add all sorts of blocks in here. Now, the probably the most common thing most people are going to want to do is add the featured image for each blog post. So what I would recommend is clicking here, this plus icon, it's going to remove the list view temporarily, and we're going to go featured image, so I just typed in FEE to make it quick. There you see it there. And I'm going to drag it in. And as you can see uh, by that line, it's telling me I'm gonna put it in that position. Now, I don't have featured images for all these blog posts, which explains this blank placeholder, but these other ones do have some generic images just in the mix. So you can see now we've got some visual representation for each blog post. And again, if we go back to list view, we can move these however we please. We want it up top, above the title, you can do that. Uh, you do also kind of get some options with um, the featured image. You can, you know, make it, uh, you can, you can have an overlay opacity. You can manipulate the, the dimensions of it. Uh, just kind of, you can kind of toy with that. Uh, you can add borders. Uh, now th this also may vary, you know, you can add a border radius. Uh, this should be available to you by default, but if it's not, uh, you may be on an older version of WordPress, but you can see I have an overlay here. You can also have it link to the post. So if I click on the image, it'll go to the post. You can have a new open a new tab and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the individual options for post featured image. Now, if I go back to my query loop here, another cool thing is I can then set how many columns I like for this, so if say I wanted to increase it, I can do it four or decrease it to two or maybe even a singular column. Looks like I can't do that. Huh, I stand corrected. Okay, so maybe you can't do one. Um, but that's one particular option. Now, if you want to open the door for more options to this, uncheck this, this inherit query from template. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open a few more things here. It's gonna allow you to choose the post type, which of course we wanna use blog posts in this example, but you could see that another post type is a page. Again, my what I talked about at the top, you may have additional post types, custom post types, like for books, movies, whatever, testimonials. It could be any anything that your programmer has built in that's, that's specific to your site. So that's gonna be available in this dropdown. I don't happen to have any custom post types, so I can't show that as an example, but you get the drift here. You could choose that. You can also uh, you can also set the uh, order by 
So let's say we want oldest to newest, which is cool. We can have it automatically populate that way. We want an A to Z, we can do that too. Z to A, that too, but let's just stick with newest to oldest. Uh, sticky posts, uh, <clears throat> if you're familiar with that, basically a blog post can be designated as quote unquote sticky. And that's just, just think of it like you're pinning, like on Twitter, you, you pin a tweet to, to your timeline. Just think of it that way. So it's gonna say you can either exclude, I think that's the default, or you include, or you only have sticky posts. So that's that. Uh, in addition, you're also able to filter. You could choose taxon uh, you could taxonomies, which is basically categories. Uh, I don't know if I have any categories, but like some people may, have, by default, a lot of WordPress sites have uncategorized, and I think all of these are uncategorized, so you can see it's filtering by that category. Um, you can do by authors. You can even do by keywords, which is pretty cool. So say I wanted to uh, keyword uh, by, um, um, and you can even kind of just do by keyword as you see there, which let's go ahead and, if you want to kind of hide those, just simply hit reset all and you've got it. So that is the basics with that. In addition, because I turned this option off in here, query byte template, I get this new option here of display settings within this little bar. What does that do? It allows me to choose how many blog posts. Uh, let's just say I want three. And so you can see I now I only have three posts. You could do an offset, which means I want to start blog post the blog post query uh, at a, uh, with a certain blog post leading it. So I want to skip the first one, I want to skip the second one, and I want to skip the third one. You can see now it's showing me four, five, and six based on kind of the parameters, you know, as you can see. So that's just basically um, what that does. It's just What's the starting point? How many blog posts do I need to, to should I skip before showing the, the, the next post? So if I just skip one, you can see that that first one is gone. Skip two, that one's gone. Skip three, that one's gone, so on and so forth. And then max pages to show. So if you have a ton of blog posts and you have how many you want per page, how many do you want the maximum to show? That's, the, that's basically what it is. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the query loop block. I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and I would really appreciate if you subscribe to this channel and uh, you know, and subscribe via the notifications bell that's there as well uh, to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thanks so much for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody has an awesome day.